Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is CJ. This is CJ Today we're going to do a tag video. My beautiful friend Jalen, JJ, J of Book Hotties fame has put together an original tag, which is called the Bar in the Bookcase tag. Sweet Jalen has put together an awesome original tag, all based off of bookish, boozy, literary tie-ins. I myself am not a drinker. Shout out to my other soda water loving lads. Yes, we're too cheap to buy LaCroix. We buy store brand seltzer water. I don't know what to tell you. It tastes the same and it's cheaper. <laughs> yeah, I don't really drink a lot at all. I actually had my first sip of wine in over a year this week and I was like, Bleh hate it so i don't know i'm just like not that into it i'll usually have like two wild nights once a year where i'm like out at the bars with my friends and i'll just like be overcome with the feeling to get drunk um and i usually just like down tequila to make that happen so i am a tequila lad when i do drink first question is an old-fashioned historical fiction recommendation well it has to be hamnet doesn't it this is a book that i'm shocked i love so much i read it last year it is pretty much sold as the story of Shakespeare's family. It's a fictionalized take on Shakespeare's family, but more than that, it's about resilience and motherhood and family and grief and loss. I thought this was excellently done. It doesn't require any previous knowledge of Shakespeare or any interest in his plays, so don't let that deter you. If you're interested into like an insular family dynamic centered character driven book, I loved it and timely because of the plague. Next up, Sidecar, book with a strong supporting character. What came to mind was A Single Man, which is about a character named George who is coping with the sudden death of his partner Jim. It's set in like the late 1960s in California, references a lot of academia and it's kind of like a day in the life subconsciously short little novel but there's a character within it named charlotte who is george's neighbor and she is a hoot she is an eccentric woman who is kind of cloyingly attached to george and forces him over for many dinner parties she's not in this book a ton but the scenes that she is in where she's trying to express her affection or her intimacy of her certain kind of weird relationship with George were really affecting to me and were really funny. She definitely provides a lot of levity and humor for this book. I, sorry, I'm back. Our pest control guy was here to talk about our rat problem. It's so fun owning a home. Anyway, to continue, we're back on a sidecar question. My other recommendation for this prompt would be French Exit by Patrick DeWitt. This is about a very privileged, luxurious family who are experiencing losing their wealth for the first time. This book is genuinely so funny and snarky and I had such a fun time reading it. I need to read other things by Patrick DeWitt. I really recommend it to get you out of a slump if you're wanting something a little bit more lighthearted. Um, but the son character in this is incredible. He's just like this mopey, kind of depressed, spoiled brat who doesn't know how to have any interpersonal relationships, including with his family and with his fiance. And I loved reading about him. Next question, a Manhattan, a book set in New York. First of all, I feel like what book isn't set in New York City? I actually got so burnt out reading about books that are set in New York City. It's something that I avoid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Last year, I don't know what it was, but I picked up so many titles where that was where the location was focused. Uh, both like contemporary and kind of historic novels, all fiction, but I just like couldn't handle it anymore. So not something I'm actively seeking out, I will say that. But one I am going to recommend is called All Grown Up by Jamie Attenberg. It's a really great piece of literary fiction that I don't think a lot of people have read. If you like depressed woman moving through the world with good writing, add this to your list. This is a book about a woman named Andrea who is a late 30s designer in New York City who is unhappy in her job and is kind of lost in her relationships. I would say the narrative arcs that we follow in this book, one is Andrea moving through the world trying to get her shit together, and then one is her relationship to her family, and specifically her brother, and 
her new niece that's born. There's actually a lot of overlap now that I'm thinking about it of this book and No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood. So if books about being an uncle or an aunt to a child are interesting to you or like caretaking in general with like kindred care um in like both funny and sad topics i would recommend this book bloody mary i do love a bloody mary i would even drink a virgin bloody mary it's like yeah tomato juice and pickles and weird stuff in it come on a book that scared you slash messed you up so for this prompt i put the bible lol <laughs> i mean genuinely though i remember when i was like at a teen christian church in arizona trying to meet skater boys there and we started reading revelations and i was like what is this this is so demonic and scary who thought this up like i'm not ready for the world to end and for like hell to be battled on earth the descriptions in the book of revelations are crazy um great great writing there so the bible I should also say the deeper the water the uglier the fish i don't know anyone who has read this book I probably have to send this to Jalen to get him to read it. I think I owe him a book exchange anyway. Jalen, not to ruin it, but I'm gonna be sending you this book soon. I love this book. It is so like psychotically messed up and has, how do I even describe this book? Oh, how do I describe this book? Okay, it's about two sisters and their mother disappears. They are like 16 and 14. So they have to go live with their father. Um something ancestral happens so big trigger warning there but it's more like psychologically grotesque and insane than it is sexually and physically so i will caveat that but i guess mostly it's about like love and obsession and how that can turn sinister even in a familial context and was like really gripping and like hurt me the whole time i was reading it really lingers with me with like probably the most disturbing book i've ever read espresso martini book that kept you reading into the night uh, I've never had an espresso martini, but it sounds cute. So the first one that came to mind, because this is my most recent experience of that feeling of that, like, I'm not going to go to bed or I'm going to stay up late and like leave the light on and like Kiki's in bed and he's annoyed that the light's still on is weirdly Stranger Care by Sarah Santillis. Um, it's a memoir about motherhood. <laughs> Doesn't sound that gripping, but there's um, definitely like a slow build of how this foster child comes into her life and then like really terrible events happen as the book wraps up and kind of leaves you with no resolution so it's fast paced and is a true story to a real person i know so i felt like i had to figure out if it had a good ending for her and unfortunately it didn't sazerac um Cesaric? I don't I don't know how to say that, but the prompt is a book that left you disoriented. For this I would say Fates and Furies by Lauren Groff. It left me so disoriented that I DNF'd it. <laughs> what a strong, weird start to a book, and you get halfway through, there's a perspective shift, and you're basically she's basically asking the reader to backtrack and see if everything she told you in the first half was true. And I was disoriented enough that I didn't care about finding out. So, sorry Lauren Groff, I love your short stories, but that was not for me. Long Island Iced Tea, book that is doing too much. Quick caveat, um, one of Kiki and I's earliest dates was to Applebee's because we thought it would be funny. Uh, shout out to Applebee's, I went there all the time when I was a teenager, those half-priced apps, baby. Mm. But I don't go as an adult, but we went. And they like have notoriously cheap drinks, like $2 margaritas and $2 Long Island iced teas. And who knows what quality of liquor they're giving you at Applebee's. So we got fucked up on Long Island iced teas at Applebee's and we ran through the streets of Portland like the wild animals we are. Anyway, a book that is doing too much is All's Well by Mona Awad. Mona. Mona, you had me with Bunny. I really enjoyed the wild romp that was Bunny. I was down for something fantastical. I knew where you were coming from. I was expecting magic, surrealism, and flawed characters. But Oswell just didn't pull it off the same. Also, we follow Miranda, who is like um, a theater professor who lives with chronic illness 
and she's miserable not only because of her chronic illness which like a lot of people in her life don't believe that she's experiencing so you know fair um but also because her she doesn't feel like she lived up to her own artistic potential working in the theater and thinks her day job is kind of beneath her absolutely spins out of control when the narrative includes like a magic potion drink um and the ability to make other people cause pain and kind of like constant fever dreams could have been and was trying to be something really spot on and clever about witnessing and believing female pain but the absurdity of it just didn't land right with me doing too much negroni a book with a triangle i do like a negroni only because i feel like i'm supposed to like a negroni like it's supposed to be like a chic sitting on a patio summer drink I gotta say tin man and it's such a sweet book i really love my reading experience of it and the absolute center of the narrative is about a group of three people one is husband and wife one is a queer friend who are all kind of in love with each other at the same time in platonic and romantic ways and they're traversing their 20s they're trying to figure out what home is to them their friendships are forging stronger as they grow older and it was a really beautiful exploration of like platonic soulmates and romantic soulmates loved it bay breeze book with a light chill heartwarming vibe i feel like bay breeze is like a flavor of boone's farm i'm probably wrong <laughs> also probably dating myself do you think teenagers now drink boone's farm if you're a teenager and you're watching this video for some reason have you ever drank boone's farm strawberry boone's farm to be specific let me know no i gotta make a sedaris reference it's been a while since i talked about him on the channel love you david calypso by david sedaris is the funniest book i've ever read I wish I could go back and experience it again for the first time. He has the funniest, driest sense of humor. Um, I will say a lot of my English friends haven't liked him as much as I do, so it might be a kind of American sensibility and humor. Um, but his observational wit is some of my favorite and he's so snarky and just like uh, petty about the most inconsequential things. I love David Sedaris. I love Calypso. His best ever. Dark and Stormy. I don't, I've never had one of those either. Book that's dark, thrilling, and menacing. Okay, so for this I said the devil all the time. Seems a little on the nose, right? You're like, yeah, it's like a thriller, but like honestly probably one of the only thrillers I've ever read. Also was like a murder mystery. I don't understand genre fiction, so forgive me if I am mislabeling anything or assigning them the wrong genres but it was suspenseful it was thrilling and it was menacing way better than the movie i read it because i wanted to watch the movie because last year i went through a renewal of my love for robert pattinson just a great man thank you tiktok for bringing back robert pattinson memes in my life um couldn't love you more and I wanted to read the book before I watched the movie because I'm that kind of lad and loved the book. The book was such a romp. Uh, we follow several murders, several nefarious characters, all set in the South. And I really liked it. I, I don't know what else more to say. It was good. It was a romp. Last but not least, okay, Martini Classics recommendation. Absolutely cannot stand a martini actually vile to me tastes like rubbing alcohol god bless everyone who can handle that drink you know we know i'm not a classic slut right i am gonna take you back so when i was in high school i went to high school in arizona which does not have a very good education system okay i think it's genuinely 49th in the country out of all 50 states terrible funding it's a red state republicans don't care about education etc so uh, I was in high school and a lot of our teachers were emergency certified because there was a shortage of teachers in Arizona while I was in high school. So they didn't even receive all of their proper training and they were like getting incentivized to be able to teach high school. Uh, anyway, freshman year, our English teacher didn't feel like putting together any curriculum for the class, like at all and didn't have any agenda or assignments in plan for the semester. And instead, he outsourced the students to make a reading list throughout the year, which we would have to like 
read the book, have discussions about it, and have some kind of essay. I don't know, it's been like 10 years, so I can't really remember. But I remember it was my turn to pick it, and being the goth emo lad that I was, I chose Frankenstein. Still one of the only classics I've ever read. Great romp, great piece of science fiction, uh, female writer representation in early sci-fi, and digestible. I'd recommend reading Frankenstein if you haven't already. Okay, hey, that's it. I feel like Jalen already tagged every single person I know on booktube, but um, I would like to see Brittany at Slanted Spines do this tag. Um, my queen, booktube goddess, at booktube goddess. Lisa Simon at Savage Reads. I think Jay already tagged him too. Uh, do this tag if you want to. Follow Jay. Love, peace, respect, goodbye.